Let us pray. Gracious God, help me to say it right. Help them to hear it right. And help us to live it right. I've done my best to give you my best in preparation. Now I am earnestly depending on you to add the power that only you can add. Come on by here, Lord, for truly somebody's praying. All this we ask in your name and in the name of everything that is holy. And God's people said, Amen. 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 Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt God's name together. Good morning and happy Easter. I am grateful to all these pastors and to all the leaders and members of these congregations for the high honor of carrying the mail today. My soul is nourished by renewing long-lasting friendships as well as beginning new friendships. I bring you greetings from Chicago Theological Seminary a progressive graduate school of theology that prepares courageous leaders who are committed to prophetic social transformation. I also bring you greetings from the Open Church of Maryland, the marvelous people I am privileged to pastor who gather both in Baltimore and in many other places through our online gatherings for fellowship and worship, hence my tardiness this morning. We had a marvelous service on Zoom today. Thank you for allowing me to be a bit tardy, and the saints there send their warmest regards to you. Amen. My sacred siblings, there is a word from the Lord. Mark 16 verses 1 through 8 was read earlier in the service. Permit me to shine the sermonic spotlight on three verses of that passage. I read again Mark 16 verses 5 through 7. Listen for the word of God. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. For a little while I want to talk from this title, Going to Galilee. And if you help me, I won't have to work quite so hard. Ma. 
what a difference a week makes. Mm. All right, all right. Yes, sir. Last Sunday, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome joined the exuberant crowd that shouted, Hosanna! As their messianic hero rode into Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Last Sunday, these women held palms in their hands. This Sunday, however, their hands are filled with something else, burial spices. My, what a difference a week. These women should be on their way to the inauguration, celebrating their newly installed Messiah, but instead they make a tedious, tearful trek to the tomb. All right, all right. Their souls needed one last glimpse of their crucified friend. He did so much for them. He restored their dignity and gave them hope. Having ministered with him in life, how could they not minister to him in death? Surely, the least they could do for him was to pay final respect by anointing his broken body. At his birth, male magi brought the infant Jesus fragrant spices. Now, at his death, these faithful Female followers likewise brought spices to anoint the executed Jesus. My, what a difference a week makes. Festival had turned to funeral. Palms had been exchanged for burial spices. The crowd had dissipated to a remnant of three brave women. As these women traveled to the tomb, hope was dead and joy was taking its last breath in the intensive care unit. My, 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 what a difference a week makes. These women walked slowly to the tomb, ponderous, Painful step after ponderous, painful step. They were in no hurry. Jesus was dead. He wasn't going anywhere. The protracted pilgrimage provided ample opportunity for them to ask questions. How did it happen? Why did it happen? What do we do now that Jesus is gone? Their burning questions created a fog as their words erupted into the chilly air of a joyless Jerusalem morning. Mark's gospel 
tells us that one of the most pressing questions for the women was, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? Often a large stone was placed at the entrance of a tomb to prevent wild animals from tampering with the corpse. Who will roll away the stone? That was a perfectly natural question. But for that natural question, there is a supernatural God. This, my sacred siblings, is the central truth of Easter. We serve a supernatural God. Easter is not about the question. Easter is about the answer. So often, we, like the women, get so caught up in the questions that we lose sight of the answer. I have spent far too many nights tossing and turning and worrying about the questions when I should have been focusing on God on who is yes. the answer yes, sir. Yes, to sir. life's yes, most sir. perplexing yes. problems, yes. even the problem of death. For our natural questions, there is a supernatural God for our ordinary problems. There is an extraordinary problem solver. Yeah. For stones well. that block our progress, well. there is a divine stone mover. Yeah. For broken hearts yeah. and confused minds, the elders declared a long time ago that God is still <laughs> a heart fixer <laughs> and a mind regulator. Arriving at the tomb, the women realized that the stone had been rolled away. They were worried about a problem that God had already solved. Well, well, come on. Yet, while the problem of the stone had been solved, Jesus was still stone dead. Ah. Or, so they fought. In the women's estimation, the larger problem of death still remained. Since the women now had access to the tomb, they walked expecting to see a cold corpse wrapped in a blood-soaked shroud. But instead, they met a young man, perhaps an angelic figure in a gleaming white robe. They expected to find death, but instead they encountered life. They came to mourn, but instead they received a message. The early morning Easter messenger said to these awestruck women, do not be alarmed. 
you seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified? He is not here. See, here's the place where they, they laid him. In other words, I, I know you grieving sisters think that death is the ultimate problem. But early this morning, before you set out on your journey to the funeral home, God solved that problem too. God <laughs> raised Jesus from yeah, the dead. Yeah. Consequently, Jesus ain't here. Yeah, uh -huh. That brother broke this camp early this morning. Let yeah. me say it again. Jesus ain't here. here. <laughs> if that ain't good news. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what is. However, the messenger continues to speak to the women, and it is what the messenger says next. That really captures my attention. The messenger says further, but go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. you will see him as he told you. Sisters, you can look in this tomb all day, but you won't find him. If you want to see Jesus, then get out of here and go to Galilee. These women went to the grave to mourn, but instead received a message to go to Galilee? Why? Galilee. Uh -huh. Galilee was the place where Jesus carried out his ministry before the crucifixion. Galilee was Jesus' mission field. In Galilee, he drove destructive demons out of people and cleansed lepers. In Galilee, he healed paralyzed legs and restored withered hands. In Galilee, he snatched sick children from the gaping jaws of premature death. In Galilee, yeah, yeah. he fed hungry bodies with two fish and five loaves of bread. In Galilee, he calmed a tempestuous storm and yeah. made misbehaving winds yeah. and waves obey him. Yes, yeah. it was in yeah. Galilee, that he declared, peace be still. In short, Galilee was the place of service. Galilee was Jesus' holy hangout before the cross, and I declare it will be Jesus' holy hangout after the cross. If you want to see and experience Jesus. Y'all better stop hanging around tombs. I was told well, to tell you. Yeah. Go to Galilee. Haven't you heard by now? The stone was rolled away so that we might see the fullness of the empty tomb. That's it. That's it. 
Easter is the beautiful truth that we are filled because of emptiness. I am full. You are full. We are full because the tomb was empty. Since we are full, now let us pour ourselves out in service in Galilee. Let me be abundantly clear. To go to Galilee, you need neither a plane nor a passport. Your identity as a child of God is all you need yeah. to enter Galilee. Yeah. And if you are fluent in the language of love, you will make it just fine in Galilee. Yeah. Yeah. For love, yeah. no matter the dialect or accent, is a universal language. Galilee is not just around the world, it might be across the street. Galilee is a symbol of our ongoing struggle to fix brokenness and to fight evil in the memory of the crucified Jesus and through the power of the risen Christ. Galilee is any geographical location where there is occurring godly transformation. Wherever people are receiving help, healing, and hope, that's Galilee, and that's where the risen Christ is. Mm, wherever the demons of sexism and racism are being driven out, that's Galilee, and that's where the risen Christ is. Wherever the satanic spirits of economic exploitation and homophobia are being Sourcized, that's Galilee, and that's where the risen Christ is. Wherever people are being cleansed from the leprosy of addiction, abuse, and self hatred, that's Galilee, and that's where the risen Christ is. Wherever incapacitated willpower and withered egos are being restored, that's Galilee. And that's where the risen Christ is. Wherever peace-loving people call for an immediate ceasefire, a return of all the hostages, humanitarian assistance for anyone harmed by the brutality of this warring madness. And serious, sustained, courageous, geopolitical movement to a viable two-state solution in Israel-Palestine that relinquishes the pathological lust for terrorism, violence, and revenge, that Galilee. And that's where the risen Christ is. An Alcoholic Anonymous meeting, a shelter for battered women, a facility offering compassionate care for our migrant neighbors, a peaceful protest in a park, a center for youth in foster care. Well, well, <laughs> That's Galilee. And that's where the risen Christ is. After the benediction, please, take a few moments to gather with family and friends to eat your Easter dinner. But for the sake of heaven, don't tarry too long around the table. 
you got work to do, so do I. We got to get on, y'all, to Galilee. It might be across the street, around the corner, down the hall, in the alley, out in the cut. Wherever it is, go there, please, for the sake of righteousness, go there. And when you get there, please introduce somebody to the risen Jesus, because he'll be there waiting for us. In Galilee, tell somebody, show somebody that Christ lives by our courageous activism, by our compassionate care. I was told to tell you, because Christ lives, there will be a family reunion after a while. Because Christ lives, Death is swallowed up in victory. Because Christ lives, the grave has lost its sting. Because Christ lives, the demonic will be defeated. Because Christ lives, we can change a life. We can fix a family. We can heal a neighborhood. We can save a city. Please, respectfully, share with our mayor, the Honorable Brandon Johnson, that on Resurrection Sunday 2024, by the power invested in us, by the risen Christ, we gave Chicago another name. Welcome to Galilee. <laughs> Go tell the disciples to meet the risen Jesus in Galilee. Yeah.